Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hey everybody, uh, welcome. I'm here with my partner John Coleman and our favorite doctor, Dr. Liz Lister. How are you, Liz? I'm wonderful. How are you doing, Art? Liz, you look terrific as always. And Thank you, John. I, uh, I always wonder about our immune systems. You know, the COVID thing for a year, of course, has been the big scare for good reason. Um, but taking the COVID and viruses and things aside, our immune systems are really important. I mean, just to fight the common cold, if nothing else. Am I correct? You are what, absolutely correct. What do we do to keep our immune system up as strong as it can be, whatever that is. Absolutely. So first of all, I'm, I'm glad you brought up COVID because one of the topics I was thinking about with this topic is that we used to, t I think the phrase flu season might be passe. Now that we're dealing with new pathogens and we're dealing with the pandemic right now, and it's kind of all year long, you know, we, we do talk about a flu season through the winter months, but I think that's not even a very useful concept anymore. We have to watch out and take care and support our immune systems all year long. That's true. Very true. And two, two major areas, I would say. One is what we put into our bodies, and the other is stress. Right. So I guess in a way, stress is something that we're putting into our bodies and it has chemical effects on our bodies. But managing stress is number is step one to making sure that our immune system stays strong. I'm going to I'm saying these in steps. I'm not sure they're really necessarily in this order. <laughs> they're all important. It's more like a circle than it is linear. Right. But reducing stress, doing what we can to keep boundaries around our work. A lot of people working from home now, doing whatever you can to have work be more confined. It used to be you leave the house and go to your office, whereas a lot of people now are doing a lot of working from home. And so we need to make sure, that, do the best we can, setting boundaries and managing the stressors that we get from work. That's one area. And the um, other major area is relationships, making sure that we're doing what we can to be happy in our in our personal lives. The, uh, the thing that I guess confuses me about when people talk about the immune system is that um, uh, while I fully recognize uh, uh, the whole issue with COVID and, and other uh, airborne diseases that masks help and social distance and all that, but it seems to me that when I was a kid, nobody told you to, you know, we had the three second rule. If, if something dropped on the floor, you could still eat it. Uh, you didn't wash your hands all the time, and so on and so forth. So does the immune system um, protect you against certain kinds of things and not other things like allergies or something? Or is it really something that we've just been lucky for a long time uh, with uh, minimal amounts of hygiene, whereas doctors never got sick in my mind because they probably always washed their hands? Our immune systems are constantly on duty, 24-7. There are two major aspects to our immune system. One is the immediate short-term, and the other is the longer-term, where we develop antibodies. Allergies are a really interesting situation because sometimes we're attacking our own body cells, right, with autoimmune types of re responses or, as you were saying, uh, allergic responses, okay? Okay. But speaking more generally to your point about infections and what we're exposed to, we are always exposed to pathogens. Uh, there's always organisms. We have a whole microbiome in our whole bodies, on our skin, inside our gut, and it's normal. There, as long as there's a normal balance between all of these microorganisms. So we're interacting with microorganisms at all times, right? So what's important is that we're supporting our immune function to be appropriate, to fight off the bugs that are bad for us and to allow the ones that are good for us to grow. And I'm going to say that the number one way that we do that with our bodies is with the food that we eat. 
what we put into our bodies. So toxins are important as well, especially ones that we apply like lotions or products that we put onto our body. But I would say the number one is probably the food choices that we make to do that as much as possible, avoiding things that people know to do, but they might not realize are this intimately connected to a good immune system function. Avoiding processed foods, avoiding added sugar, staying hydrated, all of these, keeping a balance in the different macronutrients, proteins, carbs, fats, all of that is important to our immune system function. You know, I am, I am aware that, and it seems to me that uh, it might have something to do with age, but I'm aware of a lot of autoimmune diseases, a lot of um, diseases that seem to have something to do with the immune system, whether they're uh, attacking the immune system or a weak immune system. Uh, where do autoimmune diseases fit into this idea of keeping our immune system working at maximum level? This is such an interesting and important question, John. Particularly, I just a, a comment off to the side about COVID. One of the reasons COVID is a more dangerous virus than other viruses that we have seen recently or compared to a regular flu is that it triggers inflammation. It triggers an overreaction of the immune system. So it's very, very interesting exactly what you're talking about. Autoimmune diseases are very well studied, but not necessarily extremely well understood. The immune system gets inappropriately triggered to attack our own tissues, our own cells of the body. Therefore, we, we need to have ways to support good immune function, but calm down an excessive immune response to our own tissues. That's the, the gist of autoimmune diseases. It's an interesting challenge. Yeah, and, and of course, I know uh, a little bit about autoimmune diseases. I know that inflammation is a natural response to our bodies to heal a wound, let's say. Um, exactly. It sends in, sends in the macrophage. I don't know what the right term is, but it, it yes. creates inflammation to help your body heal a, a, a cut, as a exactly. good example. To control but, the damage and heal it, hopefully, yes. Yeah, but if there is no cut, if there is no wound, and your body is telling it, start to inflame, get red, get big, get nasty, that's that's not good. That's a problem. Exactly. Uh, I take now. I take fish oil every day. Mm -hmm. I'm a I'm a firm believer in fish oil because it is a inflammatory. Is that the right word? Anti. Words, it'll, it's and it's anti-inflammatory. Anti it's going yes. to reduce inflammation, and it yes. seems to have helped me. So um, wonderful, and promotes blood flow as well. Promotes circulation. Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. good! I'm doing the right thing then. <laughs> but inflammation is a problem with our with our immune system, is it not? Or is it? They go together. They go together, as you are saying. When there's an injury to the body, the there's local reaction to keep the damage contained, let's say, okay? And then there's the immune system responding to clean up. So there's the cells that arrive on the scene to stop the bleeding or to, to yeah, to initially stop bleeding. However, ultimately the other healing processes of the body, which are the cells of the immune system and also the antibodies, those are kind of, they, they work in partnership. And then those are parts of the processes that come in and do the, do the cleanup afterwards, right? Like if you have a cut, you want it to heal ultimately. And then we end up having uh, back our normal healthy tissue, hopefully. Right. So getting, getting back to, I think I got us off on a tangent there, getting back to the immune system yes. and helping it to mat work at maximum level is part of the balance of our bodies, right? Eating the right Correct. foods getting enough sleep, uh, yes. reducing stress, ma managing our lifestyle so that we're, All these we're not stressing out. Yeah. That's exactly you, right. You, you started to mention something else, uh, relationships. Did I hear that correctly? You did. You did. Well, we were talking about stress. So yes. work stress, relationship stress, 
anything like this, uh, societal experiences can cause great stress. All of this has to be get managed. Otherwise it pays the price. Our bodies pay the price in the long run, in the grand scheme. Everything you said, uh, exercising, okay. eating well, getting good sleep, keeping hydrated, hormone balance. Of course, that's where I come in usually with my patients. Okay, the hormonal changes we go through as we get older, keeping that in good shape, very, very important. The immune system responds directly to hormones. The immune cells have receptors for the various hormones and they have receptors for vitamin D, which we've talked about on a number of occasions. Very, very important for the immune system. Yeah, vitamin D and I take also take vitamin C, which I was told uh, was big for the immune system. So, and eat as many oranges as I can. Uh, right, so I think that with all the conversations that we've had recently, <clears throat> maybe we need a whole topic on uh, uh, supplements or non-conventional, non-medicine non-prescribed medicines Good versus idea. the stuff that uh, we're told to take or that is acceptable. Uh, because it seems that, I know John particularly, there's a lot of stuff that you take that makes you feel really good. Uh, I know that, uh, I have to admit, I take fish oil as well. Uh, so there, it's another another revelation uh, you <laughs> have, John, of a coming non Coming out of the fish oil closet, eh, Art? Yes, I am def <laughs> definitely, uh, 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 slipping out uh, in an eerly kind of way uh, and admitting and admitting. I also take a multivitamin. I'm really, I'm exposed. I, I'm out of, out of the medicine chest, uh, so to speak. So maybe we should have to, but the important thing is that we can uh, maintain uh, uh, a better shot at fighting off stuff that we get. Even if we get things that are really dangerous, the healthier we are, the more likely it is that will have a good income. It's not guaranteed, but right. more likely. So uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Liz, again, for just pulling back the cover on stuff that's more mystery uh, than it probably should be for us to help us yeah. not be afraid and, and to make sure that we uh, do our research uh, with uh, uh, credible places and speak to a doctor about things that may not be conventional or, or just a simple thing. I, you know, my doctor should tell me drink, actually he tells me to drink a lot of water and eat blueberries in the morning. So that's things that I remember. Exactly. And oatmeal. He likes oatmeal. Uh, but I don't and good old gonna... hand washing. And, good old oh, hand yeah. washing as well. Right. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, thank you again. And it's just, it's always just great to talk to you. It's like sitting around with a, with a, a good friend who's schmott, as, as my partner John would say sometimes. You're very schmott. You're a schmott person. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. For more on Celebrating Act 2, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.